So today I'm taking a look at the M3 Max versus a 4090 laptop, the Razer Blade 16. This has a 4090 and the Intel 13950HX. This MacBook M3 has the M3 Max with the 40 core GPU and an astounding 128 gigabytes of system RAM. Uh, Apple has made various claims about better gaming performance and compatibility in their last keynote event that we'll take a quick look over back in October 2023. And then we'll compare two games that are run natively on both uh, OS systems, so Baldur's Gate 3 and Resident Evil 4 Remake. Both are AAA games that came out within the last two years, so rather recent. So for the M3 processors, uh, not anything previous, they seem to claim they have a new kind of memory allocation scheme where it dynamically allocates the memory to increase GPU utilization, therefore performance in things like gaming or rendering. Uh, let's see what they have to say. Biggest advancement comes with the GPU. The M3 family of chips introduces a next generation GPU that takes the largest leap forward in graphics architecture ever for Apple Silicon. It starts with a new microarchitecture that has a breakthrough feature we call dynamic caching an industry first. In a traditional graphics architecture, software determines the amount of local GPU memory that's allocated to upcoming tasks at compile time. This results in reserving the same amount of memory for every task based on the needs of the single most demanding task, which means the GPU is underutilized, especially with complex programs. In our next generation GPU, local memory gets dynamically allocated in hardware in real time. So only the exact amount of memory that is needed is used for each task. This dramatically increases the average utilization of the GPU, which significantly increases performance for the most demanding pro apps and games. So let's take a stop there. So instead of having uh too much memory allocated, you only have enough memory allocated at a time, and apparently that helps uh, GPU utilization. I'm not a GPU expert or anything, but that doesn't totally make sense to me, and it's not clear from this presentation why that's true. Like, if you have too much memory allocated, why would that uh, decrease the, why would that make the processor, the GPU processor, less efficient than it would be if it had only the exact amount of memory? It's just not clear to me. Uh, if you have, you know, leftover memory, then, I mean, the the amount of processing you're doing is the same. You just, just took up resources that you didn't need. This is an industry first, transparent to developers, and the cornerstone of our new GPU architecture. The okay, now we're talking about the GPU performance relative to a 12-core PC laptop chip. It says it's, it performs like... A little bit under, a little bit over two thirds better than the a twelve core PC laptop chip, which is impossible for you to identify, and it does it at a much less uh, power load. Uh, so first, I don't know what this twelve core PC laptop chip is. I'm guessing they're comparing it to like an Intel chip that has a iGPU, and uh, against the new M3, and it doesn't say which M3, I'm guessing the M3 Max. So they're trying to make it, you know, this, the disparity as big as possible. So Apple also claims they have a new game mode on the M3 MacBook laptops and probably on their older laptops too, since it's just a software thing. So Matt, the game mode is supposed to prioritize any game application and decrease latency to peripherals and probably shut down some background processes to help uh, free up resources for the game. So let's see what they have to say about that. Like the new performance mode in screen sharing, which enables extremely risky tasks to deliver consistently high frame rates and drastically reduces latency with your wireless accessories. So you can enjoy even more immersive gameplay in your favorite titles like Baldur's Gate 3. No matter what your passions are. So it's, it's pretty vague. It I'm not sure how they decrease latency in the Bluetooth. Maybe they were using a low power mode and they're switching to a high power mode. And then for the consistent frame rate, I'm guessing, like I said before, they just reduce some processes. But we'll see how that actually fares. So here we have Baldur's Gate 3 and Act 3. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is kind of known for being a very CPU bound game, especially in this particular part of the game. Uh, both the M3 Max and the 4090 laptop the Razer Blade 16 perform about the same. I see about an average, roughly about 60 FPS. 
uh, throughout this whole area, which is very busy with a lot of animations and characters going around. So surprisingly on par with each other in this particular scene. So for Resident Evil 4, the story is much different. The 4090 laptop basically wipes the floor with the M3 Max. The M3 Max kind of hovers in the 70s, mid 70s, whereas the 4090 is 117 to 130 FPS. And both of them are close to the same settings as possible. Uh, this, this is a difference about of 85%. And see, as you can see, without CPU bound uh, performance, the 4090 pulls far ahead of the M3 Max, even with the 40 core GPU. You shouldn't be picking up one of these M3 laptops for gaming, but if you want to game and you are interested in the small selection of games that are available on OSX, it can definitely do it. And if we saw in the CPU bound game, in the most CPU bound part of the game, Baldur's Gate 3, that the performance is actually on par with the 4090 uh, mobile GPU. So you can get pretty good performance. It also performs decently well in the less CPU bound game, but not quite as not nearly as well as the 4090 in something like Resident Evil 4 Remake. But you can get away with it. And if that's something you want to try, uh, that's totally uh, doable. Like if this is your only laptop and you just want to dabble a little bit, that's a perfectly fine use case. If you want to play, you know, a myriad of games, like things that come out like instantaneously, like Power World that are, you know, instant hit, then, you know, the compatibility is just not there, even if the performance would be otherwise. And that's years to come. But we can see from these tests that the base, the foundation that they can grow on if they choose to do so, if Apple chooses to do so, to build their gaming library and compatibility up is there and they have the hardware to support it. And that's very interesting to me because uh, before you're basically locked into Windows if you want to game and having more choices, having more freedom of options to choose your platform gaming device uh, is always better for the consumer. So this is something I think everyone should be somewhat excited for, even if you're primarily a Windows gamer and you would never touch a MacBook. It just gives you more options, and that's uh, a great advantage for the consumer. So once again, if you liked this video, found it entertaining or educational or insightful, please drop a like and subscribe in the comments, and I'll catch you later. This is Tech Addict signing out again.